Starlink's unique offering has made it a suitable commercial backup connection for some circumstances. Today, we're going to be unboxing a Starlink and giving you an MSP's eye view of the tech. Let's get it out. Magic. Very heavy, this thing. Definitely weighs a couple of kilograms. Okay, let's go. Here we go, we got the mounting bracket. So you can put it straight on your roof. That's where it's going. This is the Starlink itself, the actual antenna. Ooh, that's heavy. Very cool, very simple. Just a big flat white disc. What is this? Okay, okay. We've got a cover for the Starlink. Strap, okay. So this looks like the router that comes with it. What have we got? So this one, this is the power supply, but we're also carrying data over this. 25 meter cable, I believe. That's what this is here. So obviously it connects to the router on one end and then the radio on the other side. Really robust. It feels like really good quality, honestly. Really heavy. It must be doing a lot inside this. And there's a data cable, proprietary connector on the end of this. Standard RJ45, presumably Cat6 on that one. But this looks like a USB-C mixed with a micro USB. Bracket for the power supply. That's cool. What have we got here? Some stickers, obviously. Effectively merch. And then what have we got here on the broadsheets? Nothing. I was hoping for something that had like the names. Just like, this is called a power supply. This is called radio microwave, whatever they would call it. Cool. And that is the box unboxed. Very minimalist, like an Apple product. Very techy, very heavy, robust, looks good quality. Let's actually plug it in and start like connecting things together. Turn it on. Okay, so let's look at this cool bit of tech. This is the Starlink high performance model. We have a requirement to get one of these installed where there is limited physical connectivity. BT can only go so far. And this is gonna be a great little backup addition. There's about 6,000 satellites above us right now, all across mostly all of Europe, mostly all of North America, quite a lot of South America, a little bit of Africa, a little bit of Asia. There's a radio potentially above you right now. You can even potentially on a really clear night go and actually see your Starlink satellite that's right above you. But yeah, basically you just point this at the sky. It's going to work with microwaves, it's speed of light as fast as it can get to low earth orbit where we've got satellites up there. And then this will be able to speak back and forth. As far as like actual like speeds and data, it varies. Obviously it depends where you are, depends on the satellite, is there an issue above you right now, et cetera, et cetera. But average expectancy, we're looking at about 220 meg download speed, which is pretty good. And then upload speed is around like five to 25 meg. So almost similar to a DSL line, it's prioritizing the download, which is what most consumers will probably need. And you'll probably be using this as your backup or you'll be using it somewhere that doesn't have access to a, a more robust lease line. They're great speeds, honestly, like better than any DSL that you could get. Surprisingly, it's not that expensive compared to most business lines, most business-based connections that you'd be looking at. So high performance model, you're looking at two and a half, three thousand pounds for the unit and the router, which is probably quite acceptable. If you're looking for backup internet, maybe where you don't have it, you could be on an island, you could be in the middle of a farm and you can't get really good connectivity where you are, or you're gonna be paying hundreds of thousands of pounds in excessive construction charges to dig up a mile of road. This, you can just order it, you'll have it There's within a couple of days, and then you just plug it in and point it at the sky and you've got internet. I'd say that's acceptable, probably for most businesses, uh, maybe not for consumers, but there is a low performance model, which would probably suit most consumers in those similar scenarios. Okay. Monthly cost as well, it's it'll set you back way less than a leased line, depending on the package that you choose. So the basic package, you get 40 gig a month. It's it's gonna cost you less than 100 pounds. For what you get, the fact that it's effectively, you think about it as like, it's a really robust DSL line that you can spin up anywhere within a couple of days of ordering it is amazing. Like honestly, it outweighs the cost, which isn't that high compared to a standard business lease line anyway. Been working with lease lines for decades and even a wireless lease line will cost you more than one of these would probably cost you. Few negatives, you don't get a static IP address. You can get a public IP address if you have the high performance business option, but that isn't your IP address. So this IP will change. So you probably wouldn't be able to run a full business off it because you might need to allow your business out to X website or in through like a specific thing to your web server. There's many reasons why you would probably want to have a static IP as a business. But yeah, as, as far as having a backup line so the office could run if there was an issue with your lease line and again, the, thinking about excessive construction charges, anything that would 
inhibit you getting a second lease line, maybe even resiliency, like if your lease line has to go across one specific road or a bridge and you just can't get access anywhere else, this is quite an affordable option. And yeah, let's, uh, let's give it a test now. Let's plug the tech in. Okay, I've clicked in. Yeah, that's solid. Okay, so we've plugged in the power supply. Okay, so it's got one single LED on there. Okay, we're gonna plug the router in too. Okay, so he's making a small noise now. Motorized unit right there. Let's try to find the sky. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Starlink. There's no sky available right now. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It's motorized, it's trying to find a satellite. So I know there's always a chance that they can speak to a couple of satellites overhead. So obviously it's just, it's just always gonna look around, try and find the closest one. That's pretty cool. So let's see if we get anything with this. That's just data. So let me pull the router in as well. So this is the LAN. So this is a, actually a router. So this is gonna go into my firewall over here. That's this one here. All right. So we've got the Starlink router connected, plugged in now. So we've got this side of the power bank goes to the receiver. This is power and then this one goes to whatever your router is going to be. In this case, we're using the Starlink router for this test. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to connect. It's on the Wi-Fi. This creates Wi-Fi and now it's letting me set up a Wi-Fi network. Okay, so yeah, we've got the Starlink router connected now to the power supply, power supply to the receiver. When we deploy this, we're gonna put in a firewall which will connect to the power banks. This port here, this connection, that's your ethernet, so this goes whatever router of your choice. The Starlink router by default only has two ports, power and the data from the receiver. So it's doing Wi-Fi right now. So let's jump in and let's set up a network. So enter Wi-Fi network name. Okay, let's try and connect now. So if you check your Wi-Fi on your device, you'll see a Wi-Fi network called Starlink, all caps. Connect to that. Okay, so that network is now set up. So let's let's try and connect to Synextra Test Starlink, shall we? So we're connected. We've got no internet because there's a ceiling above the radio, obviously. But let's see what our gateway sets to. So we're connected here. Let's just see, IP configs. So it gives us IPv6, and yeah, so it's just using 192.168.1.1 by default on the Starlink router. So it's giving me 1121, and then let's ping our gateway. Very useful test, kids. Ping your gateway, no network, before you speak to your IT. Okay, so we can ping our gateway, that's working perfectly. So next step, I'm gonna log on the gateway and see where we get to. 192.168.1.1. There you go, that's all you get. You just get, you are connected to Starlink. Do you want to ask any questions? Yeah, is there anything that... Questions from the audience? Uh, you, sir. Is it a gimmick? It's not. I think the benefit of uh, literally our use case and the reason we've got it isn't a gimmick. The, the benefit is you can spin it up anywhere there is a satellite above your head. Obviously, that's not the entire planet. It's none of the oceans. But anywhere that is near, probably somewhere that's quite mainland, but you're not mainland, you know, again, middle of a farm, just a farmhouse that's maybe quite far away from the main road and getting that dug up by your lease line provider would be like an exceptional cost, like probably too much for most businesses, let alone people. Um, and then also islands, like we live in the UK, there's lots of islands. There's many, many, many islands now. A lot of them, are, they've got wires to them now, but this is a perfect backup connection or if the wired options aren't to your suit, this will work. And also it can move you just need to go where there is sky. Um, and that's it, you just point it at the sky. So no, I don't, I absolutely do not think it's a gimmick. Um, that's quite quite cool as well to play with. So yeah, it's interesting. So how does Starlink compare to uh, a cellular 4G, 5G? Sure, internet? so similar, you, you think coverage might be similar because you, you, you've probably even heard the whatever mobile provider you've got over in the UK has 95% or 99% coverage. That means of homes. And again, this is for the outliers because if you could potentially get a good 3G, 4G, 5G signal at your home, you can also probably get a wire. You aren't the people that this is probably catering for. You're thinking about the people that, again, they're in the middle of a field, they're at the top of a hill, they're on an island. Mobile signal might be stretched. It might be coming from a mast that is too far away. And that's, again, that's our exact use case. Mobile signal at the site this is gonna be installed at is very, very bad. You're lucky if you get 3G, 
you cannot run a business. So versus 3G, 4G, 5G, I'd say they've all got their own benefits and costs because you might be able to find it's a lot cheaper to get the initial setup for a 4G, 5G router, firewall, whatever, wherever you're looking at. But one, you need to have a good place for that to go. So you're going to have to think about where you're going to get the antenna, make sure that you get the right IP rating. So that's going to have to go outside. So you probably, you're potentially bolting the antenna outside anyway. If you've already got excellent signal, you potentially already have the ability to just order a really good wire into your building, which would be my recommendation in the first place. Um, but also data costs. So generally from what I've seen is you only get a certain amount of bandwidth included and then every one gig above that has a cost, maybe one or two pounds, which really starts to add up with a business that everyone needs to download emails and do video calls, etc., all day long. Um, so Starlink's options, the one terabyte, more than enough for most businesses, especially because you're probably running it as a backup. It's not going to be a primary line. Something also really interesting about this is, I can actually I can feel the heat on this right now as well. These can operate at very low temperatures. It can operate down to, I think it's minus 30. I wouldn't want to push it that far, but we shouldn't expect to see that in the UK anytime soon. And it will melt snow for you. So you don't have to worry about going out and scooping the snow off. An issue that I've actually had in a previous role at a wireless uh, ISP, we actually had to, sometimes when the weather was going sideways and it was really icy or snowy, I actually had to get up there and like wipe the snow or the sleet off the uh, microwaves that we were putting in and they were building to building. This point straight up, it's probably going to catch more. So it was obviously an inherent design decision. Um, it can melt up to about one and a half inches an hour. Which is, which is a lot, obviously, four centimeters if you want it in, in metric. Um, but yeah, so you can operate it really cold. It can go up to 50 degrees Celsius. So it can like survive a British summer, most North American summers. So just check the spec sheet, make sure it works for your climate. But where we are, where rain is the biggest problem, and this is at least the IP rating that we need, Perfect, perfect option. So weatherproof enough for the area of the UK that we, we operate in. Okay, next step, we're gonna get this outside. We're gonna get it on the field and then we're gonna see what sort of internet speeds that we can get. Let's take it outside. <laughs> Let's see how long it takes to boot. It's been plugged in for 30 seconds now. Okay, it says that I'm connected to the internet now. So let's have a look. Let's just do a quick speed test. Let's see what we can see. Pretty cool. So, wow, look at that. We'll get 150, 160 meg where we are right now. 180, it like, looks like we might actually cap. That's really good. So we're near the top end um, of bandwidth usage here. Latency, 28 milliseconds. Again, we're talking about the same as DSL. Good upload speed there. Considering it's between five and 25, looks like we're right in the middle. That's great, yeah, this latency is amazing. Yeah, 28 milliseconds. Unloaded latency. That's that's fantastic. Good stuff. Let's see. Just make sure that we are on Starlink and we're not connected elsewhere by mistake. Let's go on what is my IP. Yeah, we've got a public IP. It's a London-based IP. That's fine, whatever. But yeah, we can see that we are using Starlink as our ISP there. Brilliant. Successful test that. Um, our next steps ourselves are to connect it to a firewall, lock down security, and then, yeah, take it from there and then get it installed and operating as a long-term backup solution. Thank you very much. Put the carry case on. Look at that. It's got a carry handle. Like an actual shoulder strap. I could pull that off. 